This is an ad for BetterHelp. Welcome to the world. Please, read your personal owner's manual thoroughly. In it, you'll find simple instructions for how to interact with your fellow human beings and how to find happiness and peace of mind. Thank you, and have a nice life. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with an owner's manual. That's why there's BetterHelp Online Therapy. Connect with a credentialed therapist by phone, video, or online chat. Visit BetterHelp.com to learn more. That's BetterHelp.com. Today on CityCast Portland, it's all of our top picks for the month of October in food, entertainment, and everything in between. And joining me on the show are our very own producers, John Atariani and Julia Fiaioni. It's Tuesday, October 1st. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. Happy October, everyone. Welcome to the show. Hey, happy freaking October. Hey. That's what I like to hear, John. Change of the season. You know I'm an October lover. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> if you're new to the show, our monthly guides are something we started doing here at CityCast Portland to just feel a bit more connected to our city because it's so easy to get stuck in routine and forget about all the cool things that are happening around you. So hopefully after you listen to today's show, you'll walk away with some new ideas for how to have the best October possible. And if you don't, John will pay you $5. It's true. <laughs> it's a money back guarantee. <laughs> Hit me up November 1st. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump into things. Big ticket items. Who's going first? I can go first. I mean, I feel like October is when seasonal stuff really kicks into high gear. Mm -hmm. uh, Halloween is coming. I just ran into Julia the other day at Movie Madness <laughs> when I was picking yeah. up a bunch of horror movies. Um, yeah, I mean, Halloween stuff is all over this month. And the one that I want to pick is something I've always wanted to do, but I've never quite gotten around to, the spirit of Halloween Town. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that? Do you guys know about this? Oh, okay. yeah. I have to take you back to 1998. There was a Disney film called Halloween Town, which I have definitely never seen. Never but heard it, of it. But it seems... Of course, that makes sense for you both to not have seen it. It's just a little bit too old. It was like a kid's movie that came out in 1998. Uh, it stars Debbie Reynolds. Uh, she was like the grandmother of a family of witches who live in a town where it's always Halloween. <laughs> is this live action or is this a cartoon? This is live it's action. It's live action, oh, yeah. Okay. And, but it was filmed in St. Helens, Oregon. You know, oh. which is like just up the river, maybe like 45 minutes from the city. So St. Helens has taken this very seriously. <laughs> and every weekend in October, they sort of throw this festival themed around this 1998 Disney movie hmm. that was filmed there. <laughs> and they turn the town into Halloween town. There's like a great pumpkin lighting. There's like a haunted train ride on the street. There's a, a haunted house and then just like a bunch of like decorations in downtown St. Helens. It looks like super silly and fun. And I want to go to Halloween Town. This is <laughs> such a dreamy idea for me, John, because for some reason, my generation, Gen Z, mm -hmm. grew up on this shit because they came out with uh, a series of films that continued the story after this initial film came out. And it's just what we look forward to being on Disney Channel every Halloween. They would play like, I think there's four of them. Totally. And yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. we would just stay up super late waiting for them to come on. And it was such an immersive concept that to be at Halloween Town is so dreamy for me. I've not gone yet, though. And I think this year might be the year. Claudia, you're looking at us like, what are you two talking about? I know. It's like you either know it or you don't. <laughs> well, here's the thing. One, I was just a little too old in 98 to, you know, have known about this children's show. But I also grew up really religious, mm -hmm. you know, n you know, not my doing. And so we never celebrated <laughs> Halloween. So it's just never been in my like cultural lexicon. Yeah. And it's for me, it's more just like fall, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's like, so just imagine being confused on two levels where I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I clicked in because it, it's it's super cute. And y'all, it's not just October. I mean, it started in September. 
Like mm-hmm. they're like all about Halloween town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every weekend up until Halloween. Yeah. I think it's cute that mm-hmm. the last day is on Halloween too. They like kind of just close the book and wrap it all up to the next year. This is pretty popular nationally though. My sister all the way out in New Jersey was like, do you know about this? I was <laughs> really? like, of course I do. <laughs> it's really cute. Well, what about you, Julia? What are you doing? So I got to be honest. This is something that I won't be able to go to because I'm out of town, but I'm so sad that I won't be going. So I'm hoping other people will go in my place to go and experience and enjoy it. But Hollywood Theater is putting on an H.P. Lovecraft film festival. Mm -hmm. And not everyone knows H.P. Lovecraft. I've, I've understood that. But he is a very popular author from the early 1900s that does cosmic horror. He grew up in New England. His stories are very strange. But if you're into strange, uncanny gothic cosmic horror stories this is definitely the space for you there's going to be a number of short and feature length films playing on all three screens throughout the weekend um the tickets are 90 dollars for the whole weekend but 30 to 45 if you just want to go on a specific day and the only rule is that the films have to be quote unquote lovecraftian Mm -hmm. which in lovecraft words means i'm gonna read this out too it's kind of dense but here we go a certain atmosphere of breathless and unexplainable dread of outer unknown forces must be present. And there must be a hint of the suspension or defeat of those fixed laws of nature, which mm. are our only safeguard against the assaults of chaos and the demons of unplumbed space. So just wild. If you go to this festival, you got to write in and let me know how it goes. I think what's cool about it is that not all of the films are entirely based on his stories. They're just kind of like interpretations or inspired by it. So there's Mm -hmm. a lot of creativity there. But yeah, do you guys know about Lovecraft or read his stories or have interest in this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, of course. And and I think even for anybody who doesn't know, who hasn't like read an H.P. Lovecraft story, you you sort of know the vibe. You sort Mm -hmm. of know the legacy of his work, of the sort of like creepy, monstery, gothic thing that is like pure Lovecraft. Um, I will also say this is one where like really got to separate the art from the artist here because Mm -hmm. H.P. Lovecraft was pretty racist. Kind of a dick. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I know about that too. And I feel like I was surprised to he- hear that Hollywood was doing a whole festival, but this is their 29th year of it. So mm-hmm. I feel like that's exactly why they do it. It's a lot of separating the art from the artist. And it is featuring films from people who are making them and have made them and aren't him. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so it makes sense. I would go if it was him. Like, just a new film that he just made today. <laughs> like, like, oh, I'm sorry. you got this some questions strange. to answer. I Mr. know. <laughs> Does racism pickle you? Like, I want to know. Okay. <laughs> well, for my pick, uh, this is something I've heard about for years and have never attended. But every time I see pictures of it, I'm just like a little jealous. It's the <laughs> West Coast Giant Pumpkin Regatta. It's an event that's been happening every year in October for the past 20 years. It's where people race real life giant hollowed out pumpkins across a lake in Tualatin. <laughs> Have you guys heard of this? <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, being that this is the Portland metro area, people aren't just racing, uh, you know, a thousand pound giant gourds. They're also just fully decked out in crazy costumes. And it's become a nationally covered race because it's like so freaking goofy. (laughs) And Tualatin has, of course, capitalized on the attention and has made an entire day of it. So it's not just uh, this race. They've planned a full day of events and entertainment, which includes uh, food, craft beer, pumpkin bowling, pumpkin golf, a (laughs) regatta-themed family-friendly 5K that, of course, includes costumes and trick-or-treating. And Mm -hmm. it's going from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., on Sunday, October 20th. If you haven't heard of Tualatin, it's about 20 to 25 minutes uh, from inner Portland, depending on where you live. It's just south of Tigard and west of Westland. I looked into biking there because I was like, oh, it's, you know, kind of close. And it would take like two and a half hours from St. John. So props not. Yeah. No. <laughs> I would look at their website because it seems like they have shuttles and stuff. I think that Tualatin mm-hmm. in this day just gets slammed with cars, you know? So... Do with that information what you will. I feel like this is one of those things where you hear about it and you're like, well, they can't be like racing in giant pumpkins. And it's like, no, (laughs) they're racing in giant pumpkins. It's so goofy. (laughs) I'm looking at the website right now. And I think another thing that's really catching my eye is this pumpkin way off. 
there's a picture on the website already of this person in a yellow ball cap with a big smile and a thumbs up and a nearly 2,000 pound pumpkin underneath him. So <laughs> that sounds like a fun time. And what's great is all these pumpkins are donated by um, the farmers. So I guess mm -hmm. like throughout the whole year, farmers are growing these pumpkins specifically for this event, which is yeah. so cool, you know, and also what a waste, but like kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine like racing and getting out and just having all that like stringy stuff on you, you know? Oh, like, yeah. I know they, I know they hollowed it out, but like yeah, you could just just <laughs> just sort of like flip over to the side and it'll wash right off. But let's take a quick break here, and when we get back, more of our top picks for the month of October. If you're a home DIYer like me, you might have some leftover paint gathering dust in your basement. But I'm happy to share that Paint Care has three simple rules for painting smarter, reducing waste, and helping you get back some of that much needed storage space. First, buy the right amount of paint for the job. Paint Care has six questions to ask yourself when buying paint that can help ensure you have enough while minimizing waste. Second, you use up what's left. Before you break out the paintbrush and tape, see if you have any leftover paint that can save you a trip to the store. Paint Care's website also offers helpful tips for storing paint properly so it lasts for years. And third, if you still have paint, stain, or varnish left over, Paint Care makes it easy to recycle it with convenient drop-off locations as close as your local hardware store. And you can go learn more at paintcare.org slash three simple rules. All right. Well, what is everyone most looking forward to eating or drinking this month? Uh, I can go first. We're approaching the end of the sort of summer vegetable season. Everyone's got way too much of something on hand. I've got like way too many sweet peppers this year. Mm. So it's time to think about pickling some of these extra vegetables that we have sitting around. And the Portland Fermentation Fest is coming up on October 10th also known as Stink Fest. It is a celebration <laughs> of all things pickles. Uh, there's just like endless fermented foods and beverages that are going to be there. I mean, obviously pickled vegetables and kraut. There's also going to be pickled fish, pickled liquids, pickled dairy, soy ferments. And it's just like mm. all these like both pro and amateur picklers offering up all of these like amazing pickle treats along with like other sort of pickle themed events. Uh, one year recently, there was a performance of a traditional Japanese fermentation dance. Oh, um, that, like, really? Yeah. It's like a, huh. Yeah. It's coming up on October 10th at Ecotrust Irving Street Studio in the Pearl. Uh, apparently it does indeed stink because of all the fermented vegetables, but uh, for pickle lovers out there, it sounds pretty great. <laughs> this sounds awesome. I feel like I cannot get enough of fermented foods year round. So to have a bunch of people in a room super excited about it, I'm totally in. I just think of like botulism. I'm sure that's not what's going to happen. But whenever <laughs> I think of myself pickling, I'm just like, I'm going to get botulism. I don't even know if that's how you get botulism. Just Isn't FYI. That the jam? I don't know. That's I'm just saying words. OK, so <laughs> <laughs> I am really interested because they're doing I don't know if you if this is how you pronounce it. It's like natto. The, it's like no, a fermented know. soybeans that Japanese people eat in for breakfast sometimes. And I've I'm, I've always been curious because people either love it or hate it or both. And I want to try it. I want to I want to try not, though. The other thing I saw mentioned that they uh, encourage people to bring fermented goods as well of their own that they've made in case you want to swap. So if oh, you really want to get wacky, you. you can like bring your own jar of kimchi or your homemade kombucha and try and find some other fermentation nerd to trade with. So when I was a, a young child in college, I uh, interned at the Washington State Department of Agriculture in their food safety department, which is where I learned the word botulism. <laughs> um, part of this like lab was that we interacted with a lot of what they call food safety officers. Mm -hmm. And these are the people that are going into like your Fred Meyers or whatever and looking at cut watermelon, whatever. And I'm just like, this is going to be a food safety officer nightmare. <laughs> like there's just no way <laughs> that yeah. like the Oregon State Department of Health heard about this and they're just like, God damn it, you guys. Somebody go over there, figure this out. Jeez Louise. <laughs> it smells. They're trading cans. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, I mean, if it's not for sale, I think that's fine. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like when it's for sale that the state department comes in. It's just like, uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Well, what about you, Julia? What are you excited about eating in October? I am so excited about Wing Week. First of all, didn't know that Portland also did a Wing Week next yeah. to Burger Week and Pizza Week and Dumpling Week. Oh, yeah. So this will be my first year attending and trying out some wings. Um, I think what killed me, though, was the Portland Mercury. They run these food weeks. Mm -hmm. Their uh, branding of this week. I have to read this to you guys. So okay. what, dear reader, was the greatest week of your life? Think back on that moment, treasure its beautiful memory, then throw it in the trash. <laughs> because the Portland Mercury's Wing Week is about to make every other week you've ever experienced look like garbage, in all caps. <laughs> So there's that. <laughs> and it's underway now. We are in Wing Week. So, oh, yeah. So this oh, yeah. is the best week of our collective lives, I guess. So if you haven't heard already, <laughs> get to eating those wings. I'm going to read off some spots that have wings that really caught my eye. Uh -huh. At Fry Baby and Buckman, they have Korean honey butter wings. Ooh. At Lariat Lounge in Southeast, they have chicken and waffle wings, which is like these little mini waffles with those chicken wings right next to each other in a basket, which I think is so cute. <laughs> At Taylor Street Tavern downtown, they have whiskey pickle wings. At the Rambler on Mississippi, they have blackberry habanero delicious wings. So those were my top picks. Mm. There are tons of others around the city. What's really convenient, they, they've done this now with most of their food weeks. They have these uh, Google Maps already made up with all the locations so you can just download that map and search and go from there oh my god i want the xlb dan dan wings i love dan dan noodles oh yeah that's gonna be interesting okay so i went to the site to see who was participating and there's so many restaurants and mm -hmm. like pubs and stuff every time it always impresses me how many restaurants uh participate and that always makes me feel good i i feel like they're running it well Mm -hmm. If that's the yeah, case. Yeah, people want to be part of it. Yeah, yeah, totally. I don't know if the workers love it, so tip well, but mm -hmm. they definitely have a good relationship with those restaurants, so. I mean, I think the main thing for me is also like, you know, some of these food weeks, you get delicious stuff, but it's hard to really pack it in. Like, you can eat a lot of wings, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I can imagine hitting up like three different wing spots over the course of an afternoon and really just like doing it up. Totally. Oh, man. Are you sharing this platter? Oh, yeah. Or yeah not, you not, alone? <laughs> I'm not okay. going to eat three <laughs> with, with a friend or a group of okay. friends. Yeah. Because they're shareable. It's like hard to share a burger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 I was like, <laughs> damn, John, I'm impressed. All right. So my pick is a little unorthodox being that it's not like specifically a food restaurant or event, but it's something I've never done. And it is food related. I'm talking about the Hood River Fruit Loop. If you're mm -hmm. a longtime listener, you might remember our resident fun expert, Eden Dawn, bringing it up as a fun fall activity last year on the show, but it involves you picks. So I kind of filed it under things that I would probably never do. Our regular listeners probably also might remember how I feel about you picks. But a couple <laughs> weeks ago, I went on a super cute date with my girlfriend where we went on a rail bike excursion along Hood River. Also highly recommended. Mm. Uh, so part of our rail bike ride included a stop at the Fruit Company and Mount Hood Winery. And both those places are part of the Hood River Fruit Loop. So I kind of got a taste of the loop and now I want more. I didn't know there was wineries. Um, it's also just beautiful out there. <laughs> like you can see both Mount Hood and Adams on a clear day. The leaves right now are changing. The oh air smells sweeter because there's so many like fruit trees out there. And if you're unfamiliar, the Fruit Loop is 31 uh, on the farm, fruit stands, wineries, breweries, cideries, and fields of flowers, which include lavender. So you can drive or ride your bike. It's about 38 miles if you hit everything up. Uh, pears are in season, so you could go get some straight from a farm. Also, it's a uh, donut and hot cider season. So, mm -hmm. I mean, come on, guys. It was like the perfect collision yeah. of those two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Nice. Plus wine and beer. Come on. <laughs> Come on. And it's gorgeous. It's like right by the river, you know, at the base of Mount Hood. It's so great. Oh, can I just tell you something really random that I learned? So one of the things that they teach you is the original, you know, settler name for Hood River. Oh. It was called Dog River because I think I've mentioned this before, how settlers are always naming things after the worst thing that happened to them there. They ran out of food and ate their dogs. Oh, no. Oh, I no. know. And for the longest time, Hood River was called Dog River. Like, and it, it was like recent times that somebody was like, what if we just called it Mount Hood River, being that Mount Hood is right there and the water's <laughs> coming from it? And everyone's like, yay. Branding professional steps in. <laughs> so, oh, my God. I'm just saying, 
Dog River Fruit Loop, not as cute as Hood River Fruit Loop. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I ate my dog Fruit Loop. Not that great. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds super nice. I, I actually made it out to the Fruit Loop super early this year in like June and like sort mm-hmm. of uh, rambled around a little bit. It was a little bit early season. I just imagine at this time of year, it's so gorgeous. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to um, everybody's favorite section, everybody's favorite part of the guide, which <laughs> is our super duper helpful hack of the month. Julia, do you want to start? I can just because we all know that John's going to take the cake on this one. <laughs> so. This one's not very fun, but practical. And I think people tend to forget you got to get your updated flu and COVID shot right now because some people don't know this. Before you travel for the holiday season, it takes about a few weeks for those antibodies to build up to actually protect you from the virus. Mm -hmm. So if you go now before the weather changes too much and before you hop on a plane to go visit family and so on and so forth, it's better to make sure that that's taken care of well in advance. And also it keeps you from having to wait in line for too long or book an appointment way too far out. I would say there is appointment availability at Albertsons and Fred Meyer and CVS, but check in with your local pharmacist. It's typically a much easier process. You can kind of just walk in and go. There's Mm -hmm. one uh, in the Hollywood district called Lake Care that's super helpful. I went last year, but also if you haven't gotten your flu or COVID shot in a while, prepare to not be able to do anything the next day, especially if you get them at the same time. I was not expecting that last year and thought I could work and had to call out like two hours maybe into the shift because it was so, so tiring. But yeah, do it if you can, as soon as you can. Yeah, that's a super good tip. Uh, Although, unless you have recently had COVID-19, like me and Claudia, (laughs) they do recommend waiting (laughs) waiting three months. I originally scheduled mine for September, and then I was like, wait, I just had COVID. Oh, we can't get get one. You can get a a flu shot, but they say to wait three months after you have COVID to get the COVID shot because we have natural antibodies already. John, once again, kill that hack. (laughs) (laughs) I can't even. Sorry to take over your hack, Julia. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's great. I haven't had COVID recently, so I wouldn't know, but thank you. Um, All right, John, step right up. It's your turn. (laughs) Okay. Hold on. Before John goes, if if this is your first time listening, (laughs) just know that John has a reputation for basically always having the best hack and making us all look uh, hackless. I don't know. <laughs> this is like <laughs> such a weird like claim to fame of mine yeah, of being like like helpful dad uh, <laughs> advice giver of the show. Okay, so it's October. It is about to start raining and raining and raining and never ending because we live in Oregon. Well, the city has fifty eight thousand storm drains. And, like, the city can't clean 58,000 storm drains. And Mm -hmm. as the leaves fall and the rain comes, they can get clogged and flood. So Peabot is urging people to adopt a storm drain near your house Mm -hmm. and just, like, take care of keeping it clear uh, before it floods your entire neighborhood. It's, like, a super cool thing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, The way they recommend doing it is, you know, if it gets clogged with leaves, use, like, a rake or a shovel or a broom. Don't get in there with your hands. And to clean it before it actually rains, to clear about 10 feet on either side of the drain. Uh, They also say don't just, like, leave the leaves sitting there if you can. Like, actually throw them in a compost bin or bag them up or something. That would have been me, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Just 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 "Ah, pile them in front of your neighbor's house. Yeah, Yeah. success. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, I feel like I have occasionally seen people out, like, doing the drain thing in their neighborhood. And I'm like, look at that guy. Look look, look at them just being good neighborhood citizens. So I have looked into it because I it does look like something – I know this is going to, it looks like fun. I'll be honest. <laughs> but I was hoping that it'd be more official. Like there'd be a site and they're just like, Claudia Meza adopted this drain. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. You, want, you want a plaque. I wanted a plaque. I just Some was merch. like, okay, it would be so great. Wouldn't it be great if every drain had the, like the name of the citizen? I'm not saying like, I want my face on it, but like, you know, I just don't know. a small just statue. A, Nothing so ostentatious. <laughs> Just it's like engraved, a marble bust, maybe. An engraved gold <laughs> little placard. That's all I'm asking for. <laughs> hey, nothing's stopping you from going there with a Sharpie and doing it yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's... Claudia's name is on drains all over the city of Portland. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, my hack this month uh, is this is actually the best time to plant trees, small shrubs, evergreens, and of course your winter crops. But I didn't know that. I think people assume spring is like peak planting time, but I actually learned this from my green-thumbed friend, Peter Condra, uh, who's also been on the show a couple times. Last time he was on, he was our guide to the Powerhurst Gilbert neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, he told me that in our area, at least, planting in autumn means more water for your plants, obviously. Mm -hmm. And the winter kind of conditions roots to become hardier. Hmm. So like last year, I, I planted a, uh, an oak tree in front of my house and he was just like, this is when we're going to plant. And so if you have a, any kind of big things that you want to plant, like big guys, this is the time. I'm planting some kale and also some broccoli and some Korean sesame leaves. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, and now that I think about it for a second, I'm like, oh, that does make sense because the summers are so dry here mm-hmm. that for something really big to take root, it's going to be a lot harder. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. I unfortunately don't have a lawn, but I do appreciate when I walk around my neighborhood and see people getting after this season specifically. I feel like it's kind of underrated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you talking about the the planting season? Yeah. Yeah. Just planting in the fall for winter vegetables mm-hmm. and, and getting behind that instead of everyone's always looking forward to summertime, this and that. But this is, I think, equally as important. For sure. Yeah. Uh, And this is the part of the show where we kind of go over all the things we listed and we pick our favorites. We vote for which one we're all going to do together. As much fun as it would be to be in a giant pumpkin with the two of you in the river. That's not (laughs) not happening. That's not, by the way, that's not how that race works. But... There's not like tandem pumpkins. I mean, for me, like hands down, wing week. Wing week wins. Wing week. Wing week okay. sounds so good. I guess we could be the two people that you'll be taking along to try multiple wing spots, <laughs> yeah, John. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go? You want to go get some wings? You want to yeah. take off the yeah. rest of this day and just <laughs> bug out to wing week? Let's go wing it. Oh my God. I just said it. <laughs> oh no. I think that's the winner. Yeah. Wing week. Wing week. Woohoo. Unanimous. It's going to be the best week of our lives, you guys. Oh Just gosh. throw away everything else. It was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we want to hear what you're doing this October. Obviously, this isn't the end all be all of list. This is just like what we think looks pretty cool. Yeah, we'd love to hear what you're also doing this month. Yeah. And also, I'd say check out our newsletter. Hey, Portland, there is so much stuff every day in there that Rachel Monahan puts together about stuff to do. So if you're looking for more things to fill up your October with fun stuff, Hey, Portland already has a bunch more really great ideas. Awesome. All right, guys. See you in about two minutes. Can't wait. Thanks, Claudia. (laughs) See ya. Before we go, I wanted to remind you that this week is our fall membership campaign. And if you enjoyed this conversation and see value in what we're doing here at CityCast Portland, we invite you to join our growing member community. You not only get the satisfaction of supporting our small four-person team, you also get access to our daily show ad-free and an exclusive members-only newsletter with a hand-picked roundup of a week's worth of happenings around town. That's before anybody else gets it. We've got more exciting plans to expand our membership offerings in the future, but we secretly hope you'll support us just because you love us and you love Portland as much as we do. Visit membership.citycast.fm to become a member today. That's membership.citycast.fm. Well, that's all for today here on CityCast Portland. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. <laughs>